You know, I was supposed to record uh, something for the last day of 2023, but it's just that our internet connection here in Intrepid HQ uh, has gone to shit on the last days of 2023. And by the time that it was recovered or it uh, went back, it's too late for me to record uh, something because my schedule is a bit hectic in the last few days of 2023. So what's the use of being uh, of recording something if I can't even, uh, you know, I can't even talk about it in at least in an unedited manner as with what the, what we're doing right now because this is an unedited version or an an edited episode of the Intrepid podcast and what we're doing right now is the leftovers of 2023 let's just say in tagalog it's called latak ng 2023 so yeah we're going to talk about the leftovers of 2023 and it's and pardon my voice as well because uh, in the past few days, I've been uh, not really under the weather, but uh, because, of the, because of New Year's and the cold weather, uh, you know, my throat's run, running dry and everyone's throats are running dry and we're not really used to the cold. So that's that. So pardon my voice, pardon my... Um, raspy voice and uh you might hear some cuffs in the in the recording of this uh podcast episode so uh, uh you've been warned by the way happy new year to everyone this is the very first episode of the intrepid podcast for 2024 let's start right now I am Ian Rinyon, an independent alternative media practitioner, among other things, and welcome to the very first episode of the Intrepid Podcast for 2024. Wow. We're 10 days in, and I still can't believe we just survived 2023. A lot of shit happened in 2023. We'll deal with that at the end of the episode. But first, we deal with... With a lot of shit that's uh that's left over from the previous year, and one of them is this Vatican document called Fiducia Supplicans. Sorry, I am going classical Latin for this, but uh that's how it is pronounced in classical Latin. So uh and Fiducia Supplicans, yeah, I mean it's. It's um it's the proper way because that's ecclesiastical Latin, but you know, not a lot of people are uh into the ch and s uh, versions of c, so I go classic when it comes to pronouncing Latin words. So that's that. Anyway, what is fiducia supplicans? You might ask. This is the document that uh the Vatican released um. Ironically, as a uh, on or within the birthday of Pope Francis, I think this was uh, a lot of cynical Catholics are uh, are saying that uh, this is basically uh, the Pope's birthday gift to uh, to the Church, and uh, I can't blame them if that's what they think. Because that's also what I think. Because it's a bit uh, ironic that you're uh, giving something uh, that would uh, worsen the the quagmire that the Catholic Church is uh, dealing right now when it comes to uh, a lot of stuff regarding sexuality, uh, personhood, and all that stuff. So, I am not... A legit Catholic commentator, I do uh, know some uh, legit Catholic commentators 
and they're duking this out in the last few days of 2023. And now that we have gone past the new year and I think uh, it just died down or it doesn't because uh, newsflash, the new Vatican Doctrine Chief, Cardinal Victor Manuel Fernandez, and I am saying that in the Spanish uh, pronunciation of the letter Z or Z, uh, even though he's Argentinian, maybe just to uh, just to spite, I don't know. Uh, he's a bit of a controver. Uh, he's a controversial cleric, even before he became a bishop or archbishop or a cardinal. He has this book, uh, which is a, a part of the title is called "The Art of Kissing." I mean, who the fuck would actually write something about sexuality in such a torrid way? All the more, a fucking cleric. Which Catholic in the right mind would actually read that shit? Unless they just wanted to have a Catholic, uh, you know, a Catholic version of pornography. Which is an, a fucking oxymoron as someone who is struggling to even uh, ditch pornography in my life. Sorry for the uh, colorful, col- colorful terms, but it is what it is. And now, just before I am recording this, Cardinal Fernandez is, um, is actually uh, publishing another document about sexuality. I am not sure about this, and I'm not sure if this is fucking true, but if it is, God help us. And uh, before we go on a tangent here about uh, that cardinal or that doctrine chief who sadly succeeds uh, a lot of good Vatican doctrine chiefs uh, such as Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger who we now know as the deceased Pope Benedict XVI. Let's talk about Fiducia Supplicans. Now, in a nutshell... The document is about a quote-unquote blessing same-sex couples. This is a hot-button topic in the Catholic Church and elsewhere in the culture wars, specifically in the West. And you know, it hits personal because I don't want to talk about this in the podcast, but I have a sister who is in a same-sex relationship. It's not that I I don't want her to be on that kind of relationship, but you know, uh, there's a thin line between uh, being a faithful Catholic and being understanding on the situation of uh, a lot of people. Quite honestly, I am uh, still scratching my head as to why Pope Francis and Cardinal Fernandez are uh, publishing this uh, this controversial document at this point in time. But then again, uh, we already have what was said in the Catholic Catechism about uh, about homosexuals and those who have same-sex attractions. They are not sinners in themselves, but if they do a homosexual act such as, you know, the things th- that only a man and a woman can do in bed, uh, for the lack of a better term, that is sinful. But being a homosexual is not a sin in itself. I do have, aside from my sister, I do have friends, I do have contacts who are gays, who are lesbians, who are uh, people who have same-sex attractions, but they've lived very chaste lives and they are thri- they are thriving in it. So 
I don't really know why uh, Pope Francis is actually doing this to the church. And no wonder a lot of people are having a hard time becoming Catholic or staying Catholic for that matter. Sadly, a lot of people are considering leaving the church just because of this shit. So, uh, at the end of the day, the only thing that I can say as a Catholic is this. We all have to get our shit together. That's it. Pardon me for my words, but it is what it is. We have to get our shit together, especially now that the powers of the world are trying to destroy the church. That's that's just my take on it. Now, uh, to another church topic, I haven't written it in my in my um, uh, show notes here. Uh, which is basically a single page in my uh, in my notebook. <laughs> in my uh, I I still write things uh, on pen and paper to be uh, uh to let you know. And uh, the next episode of the Intrepid Podcast is actually a review of the fi- of one of the films that I have um watched uh last Christmas, and it's also uh pen and it's also in a pen and paper format. Uh, I I wrote it. In the notebook, in my notebook that is uh, that is in front of me, as I record this. So yeah, uh, that's that. Now let's get into the topic, uh, the other topic about the Catholic Church. Shia LaBeouf is now an official Catholic. He has just done it. <laughs> yeah, I still remember that meme when uh we when he said, "Do it, just do it." And now he's practicing what he's preaching. He did done it. Converting to the Catholic Church. It's no longer a dream. It's a reality for him. And of course, it's going to be a very, very uh, hard reality for him because a lot of stuff has, is happening in the church. And I guess I can only wish Shia the best of luck becoming a good catholic a good father yes he has a daughter i think um uh, based on uh, some showbiz articles um a few weeks ago yeah the the uh the person who uh, confirmed him because this is a, the sacrament of confirmation after all is none other than bishop robert barron the Bishop of Winona, Rochester in um, Minnesota, and at the same time, the guy behind uh, the Word on Fire Ministries. Uh, If you remember, Bishop Barron uh, interviewed Shia uh, last year, and uh, yeah, uh, it all snowballed from there. So that's how he, uh, that's how he, became a Catholic. Uh, I would link in the description, in the YouTube description and in the Spotify show notes, the link to where um, uh, Bishop Barron and uh, Shia LaBeouf had a very uh, candid and uh, rich conversation about Catholicism and uh, their lives uh, at, at that point. So I'll link it there. Now, another topic now I haven't been uh, um, doing public transport on a jeepney and the last time I did that was last week Uh, and I accompanied the mother superior uh, to um, to a mall near Intrepid HQ I just can't uh, tell you where Uh, and uh, it's a surreal uh, feeling to uh, to ride a jeep again, uh, given uh, all of the all of uh, what happened or all of the protests that happened. 
uh, at the end of the year when uh, the jeepney modernization program uh, uh, came into full swing and swing and all the uh, old jeeps have been uh, quote unquote phased out uh, if they are not uh, if they don't want to be consolidated to uh, transport cooperatives because uh, I don't even know why uh, these people or these uh, drivers are uh, just wanted to be independent, but I can't blame them. The thing is, there there is this um there is this issue re- regarding sympathy to uh, uh sympathy and empathy to uh to jeepney drivers because, uh for the longest time they have been uh a menace to everyone everyone else on the road, because some of them drive too fast, excessive speeds on highways, and sometimes they are the they're the uh they're the vehicles that get involved in um in road accidents uh of late i rode um towards Tasmarinas a few uh few days ago and i noticed this uh derel- derelict jeep or derelict jeep on the side of the road uh along Molino Paliparan road i don't know what what happened to that but um the front's um the front's uh shitted or the front is uh uh damaged and i don't know what happened to that but it's no longer working and uh there's also this uh new story from antipolo where a jeep uh uh happened to uh get into a ditch and a lot of uh, the passengers there uh, got injured. So that's that. So you can't really. Uh, it's really. Uh, it's really. It's really. Uh, hard to empathize uh, on jeepney um, drivers because some of them do all the do all the bullshit that we are. Uh, watching and listening on the news uh, as of late. So that's how it goes. Now, uh, I'm just looking at the, the, whole, uh, the whole thing because I do wrote something here uh, regarding uh, public transport. And it's this. The past few days have been heated literally and figuratively when it comes to road use. Given how complex it is, and it is, and it, and it still is very complex, the TLDR version I have attempted to um, make uh, last December nineteen. I I posted this. I posted this on the Facebook page uh, last December nineteen. Uh, boils down to three things. First of all, car centrism is still favored despite how heavy traffic is. Uh, it, uh, is at during Christmas time, and if you are familiar with the term Carmageddon, yes, it's that because it's still a stat uh, because having a car is still a status symbol than a principal tool that has been used more than often. Secondly, cycling or e-bike or e-trike use as transportation remains to be seen as dis- as a discouraged alternative at best. Or perhaps, and uh, the discouraged alternative at best, and as road pests at worst, and in between, perhaps cyclists are treated as recreational hobbyists, and this is just my uh, addendum for the, uh, in the Facebook post, uh, without considering bike commuters, despite the benefits that cycling uh, entails. And finally, public transport has been plagued by bad actors. This is what I said earlier. Uh, discouraging the public to even trust their very lives to it, even if it is apparently the cheapest and safest option. At the end of the day, all of us just wanted to get from point A to point B, regardless of what we, are, uh, what we have in our homes, whether it's a car or a bicycle or a 
uh, or an e-bike or an e-trike or nothing at all. So everyone has the right to use the roads. To those who are saying that those who only uh, pay a road user tax should uh, should be the only ones who are entitled to use the roads or those who only have driver's license can go fuck themselves. Seriously. They can go fuck themselves because there's always public transport, there's always bicycles, and especially for the motorcy- uh, motorcyclists who are called sweet potatoes or uh, in uh, Tagalog, kamote. These people just have to understand that they are on a motor vehicle. Their, their vehicle is powered by motors and cyclists only have their legs as motors. Unless they are cyclists themselves, they will never understand how and why cyclists do what they do whenever they are on the roads. And road infrastructure infrastructure in this country is still in shambles. It's still being uh, developed, uh, thankfully, but it's not perfect. So it is time that it's just time for all of us to consider uh, doing alternative modes of transport and not rely on cars and motorcycles. In short, car centrism in the Philippines must stop because uh, quite frankly, it's the cars and the motorcycles that are involved in accidents more than those on bicycles. That's just a fact. And another thing, and uh, I guess this is uh, the the only thing that I am uh, talking about uh, that is uh, from the new year, actually. But you know, this is this uh, started August twenty twenty three, so I might as well I might as well go ahead and uh, talk about it here because technically it was talked about in twenty twenty three. It just uh, went viral this year. So, there is this uh, woman who posted on social media. I'm not sure if it's Facebook or TikTok or X or whatever. Uh, and uh, he, he, uh, she, she rather actually uh, was dismayed or uh, disappointed with, um, with her boyfriend who proposed to her and gave her a 299 peso ring. 299 Philippine pesos is around, say, $4? 3 to $4? No, no, no. Maybe 2 and a half? Yeah, because uh, that's 300, 300 pesos. So around, let's just say 2, two, two and a half dollars. Uh, that range. So the guy gave her a two and a half dollar ring, engagement ring. And she was absolutely disappointed that uh, because she expected something more. She expected a more expensive ring. She expected a lot from this guy because, uh, you know. Uh, sadly, a lot of girls are saying that uh, uh, you have to do this in order to marry me. You know, th- those kind of things. And again, I can't blame her. Know your worth. And um, well, a lot of women now know their worth. It just so happened. And uh, the the flip side of it, uh, on the other hand, is that since... Women are, um, let's just say, uh, very aware of their uh, of their worth. They will do everything to insist 
what they are worth. And um, that's a sad uh, reality that uh, men should actually uh, make a lot of effort when it comes to uh, pleasing a girl. And uh, quite honestly, as someone who is in a relationship, yes, I do, uh, I do just that. But the thing is, there are some women who say that everything that a man does is never enough because their worth is far more than what that, that man uh, could ever get. And perhaps this is because of the, uh, of the girl boss mentality that some women have. Uh, and, I, and I'm not here to uh, talk about the girl boss mentality. A lot of people have already talked about that, including Brett Cooper from The Daily Wire. But the TLDR of it is that a lot of girl bosses are now upset that they are they became girl bosses and a lot of men are avoiding them like the plague because uh they are faced with the dilemma of either keeping their standards high or uh putting it down so that they can have a partner and become the uh become the princess in this uh, in the relationship. So that's uh that's the dilemma that some girl bosses are doing are having at this point. Now when it comes to this particular uh, particular thing uh the guy eventually replied. And I'm not sure if this is for cloud chasing uh either the the girl or the guy are cloud chasing or whatever. But if this is true, it's a sad, uh, it's a sad uh, outcome. Because the guy confessed that he is the person who gave the, the two and a half dollar uh, engagement ring to uh, his girlfriend. And he was heartbroken that he only knew of his partner's disappointment on social media i mean in the age of in this digital age open communication open verbal communication between partners has been affected and uh it's quite sad that it happens that way and uh it's also sad that the guy had to had to know of her of his partner's disappointment on social media and not from the girl himself not from the girl herself to conclude that post or to conclude that social media post he said that he has decided to break up with her and it's really sad but i guess uh at the very least, the guy now understands this girl's or this woman's attitude if she becomes his wife. So, uh, I guess good on him. I don't want to say uh, the girl deserved it, but, you know, it's this irony of life that we always talk about. We always think about the material things and not what really matters as as individuals and as couples because here is the thing which is more permanent an engagement ring or a wedding ring because engagements can easily and sadly be called off uh case in point is this uh trending social media posts between this guy who uh gave the girl a, a two and a half dollar engagement ring but marriages are harder to dissolve. Honestly, this is my pet peeve about weddings. What's important for my partner and myself, Ms. Intrepid and I, is that is the sacrament of matrimony itself. If, you, if you're asking, we are both Catholics. So 
if we go down that line, if we go down that uh, road, we will we will get a church wedding. That's for sure. It just begs belief why a lot of couples are spending a lot for a single day if they could be practical and save that up for the following days, months, and years they are together. Let's face it. Prices are too fucking high. I said too damn high on the on the post that I had on Facebook, but I am on YouTube and Spotify, so I, I can I can cuss all I want. <laughs> um and while I have my reservations with Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagle, I will always remember that one thing he was right on. And that is that most wedding gimmicks and the liturgical abuses it entail, and that's a story for another day, are all frivolities. Uh, to quote him, kaekekan lang yan. Kumbaga, uh, he, he said that all of that is just glitter in what is already a golden um, uh, moment in the life of a married couple. Again, it's just one day. Why the fuck do people spend a lot for a single day if they can spend it for the rest of their lives, or they can they can save it for the rest of their lives. I don't know. That's just me. With that said, uh, at that time I w- uh, I said that I think the man should at least make an effort to either complement the ring with another high riz item. Yes, we should have that charisma even when we get married, and may God help me on that, or compensate with a much more expensive wedding ring and uh given the the guy's uh re- response he is uh he really wants to uh compensate the the cheap two and a half dollar wedding ring with a let's say ten dollar uh wedding ring or yeah a ten dollar ten dollar wedding ring or something else that is um that is uh, a a bit expensive. He really wants to effort on that. That's uh, that's the development from this uh, from this story that I just that I just uh, co- commented on. And sadly, uh, he was disappointed because, uh, to give you a background of the guy, he told the world, he told on social media that he is a breadwinner, and I feel for this guy because. I'm the firstborn of the Father General and the Mother Superior. I'm the firstborn of the Rinyons. I have three. I have two two other siblings. I'm I'm basically the firstborn, panganay, and uh, right now I am also the breadwinner of the family because uh, mostly I pay the bills and all that sh- and all that shit, and. Uh, I can definitely say that this is training for uh for for a future life. But I do uh I do empathize with the guy because uh it's really hard to um to save up if you're the breadwinner. You can't save up for yourself. And uh you know to uh to share my update on the post that I said. Uh, not, the guy has said his piece and this meant that the woman should have appreciated her partner's effort, no matter how cheap or expensive that ring is. Because truth be told, men spend too much money to appease their women and sometimes these women think it would never be enough. I'm not going... I'm not going full Andrew Tate on this shit. Fuck Andrew Tate. Because the only the, uh, the only thing that I can say at this point is I'm very lucky Miss Intrepid learned how to appreciate the simpler the simpler things in life. Uh given her uh given her stat her own status. And I'm not going to uh, divulge on that uh in this podcast, but you know what I mean. And uh I'm I'm grateful that all the, all the things that I have done to help her with that 
is uh, coming into fruition. And uh, we are in a consensus that uh, the girl is a bit of a a bit of a girl boss or, uh, you know, uh, someone who really doesn't appreciate men because all women or all men are shit or, uh, you know, uh, the woke feminism shit that uh, that's happening in in uh, around the around the world. Maybe she was infected by that. I am not sure, but it's just sad that this this happened between uh just because the guy gave her a two and a half dollar engagement ring. So that's that. Oh my, I oh. I always say two and a half dollars. Yeah, I think it is because, uh, you know, uh, I have this uh, mindset on my e- on my end that, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, fifty Philippine pesos uh equates to a dollar, but uh, that's a few years ago. It's now around sixty, I think. I'm not sure. It's because of inflation. Fuck inflation. Um, so I rounded it up into, uh, at least a hundred pesos for a dollar. Maybe that's what I, that's what I did. So that I, that's the reason why I said two and a half dollars. Perhaps it's three. Again, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, again, I'm not sure. Maybe three, five dollars. It's at the end of the day, the guy gave the girl, uh, a very cheap, engagement ring which is below five dollars that's the consensus that I can uh, that I can say or five dollars or less for that matter so uh, yeah that's how the story goes and again it's very sad it's very tragic but I'm very happy for the guy for uh, for standing up on his own and say and saying well, if you can't appreciate me giving you an, a cheap, um, a cheap uh, engagement ring, even though I am working on uh, a more expensive wedding ring or uh, something else that would uh, definitely, that would definitely benefit both of us, then fuck this relationship. We're through. And uh, yeah, that's what happened. And finally, we now go to. Uh, the last topic that we're going to uh, tackle for 2023 on in the first 10 days of 2024. <laughs> uh, basically, this is my um, year-ender message. This is the one I said uh, earlier in the podcast. So I might as well go ahead and uh, read it to you. The thing that I have basically uh, written and I should have recorded as uh, a special video recording for both the Intrepid Show and the Intrepid Podcast. Uh, both basically for both, uh, for both of my shows and for both YouTube and Spotify. So I guess that's uh, that's out of uh, out of the table now. So let's go ahead and check this out and. Uh, Basically, this is my piece uh, entitled Finding God in the Mundane. So, it goes like this. Many believe that 2023 became the year when one thing led to another. The death of a pope, the end of a pandemic, the end of certain eras, the beginning of others, the flying, the flight of a big rocket, a war pressed by extremists against the people that just wanted to exist, and personally, a series of self-reflections and in extension, the life of my social media branding. As masks are slowly being taken off and commerce and the traffic that it brings slowly return, we look back at what we as a collective have to remember moving forward and how I can efficiently get to the juncture between faith civics, and recreation by finding God in the mundane. We begin the year with with two significant deaths. 
Pope Benedict XVI, who died on the very last day of 2022, and King Constantine II, the last king of Greece. Both deaths are considered the end of their respective eras. The Catholic Church ramps up its very concerning Synod on Synodality as if it was a figurative spit on Benedict's grave, and the Greek people ha- are having a hard time governing themselves as a general election happened this year and the winning party had a leadership crisis. Now, there are also a lot of people who uh, kicked the bucket this year, and uh, to name a few, uh, there's Henry Kissinger, L- Rolando Valdez, Frank Borman, Ken Mattingly, Matthew Perry, Michael Gambon, Paul Rubens, Sinead O'Connor, Coco Lee, Tony Bennett, Tina Turner, Mike Enriquez, Mario Domawal, Jerry Springer, Lisa Marie Presley, Silvio Berlusconi, Marty Atisari, Pat Robertson, and one of the last persons to die in 2023 was Gaston Glock, the man behind the iconic pistol that bears his name. Other people have also left us this year that only those who have known them could remember. Nevertheless, may all of the, the souls of those who left, left us in 2023 rest in peace. There were also some notorious people who also died of unclear circumstances, for the lack of a better term, including Yevgeny Prigozhin, Lika Chang, Pevres Musharraf, and Theodore Kaczynski. In the spirit of Christian charity, I commend them all to divine mercy. Tensions still plague every corner of the world, from Taiwan to Korea to Ukraine to the Middle East, to the Americas. In particular, the 31st of December 2023 is the end of the ethnic Armenian government of Nagorno-Karabakh, which Azerbaijan claims as rightfully theirs. This happened as the region fell to the Azerbaijanis last September, resulting in the mass exodus of ethnic Armenians into the relative safety, safety of their homeland, Armenia. Political upheavals also plagued this this year, from the wildfires of Greece to the issue of pardoning Catalan separatists in Spain to the never-ending culture wars in the U.S. to the election of Javier Milei in Argentina to Maduro's Venezuela annexing half of Guyana. And of course, I will be remiss if I do not mention what happened on October 7th, 2023 in southern Israel. So far... The people of Gaza are on the brink of utter collapse as Hamas brought the destruction of the Strip into their own hands. Regrettably, it seems that the Israeli government is adamant in destroying Hamas at the expense of public opinion, including that of their own people. Meanwhile, a significant portion of the Palestinian people appeared to support Hamas and that the war it started became the spark that ignited a massive rise in Jewish hatred, which we thought we buried deep below the wastelands of history after a certain German dictator shot himself uh, inside his bunker all those years ago. Now, the mere fact that Islamist extremists like Hamas envision a world that is purely Islamic and Islamic alone should sow fear to everyone including peace-loving Muslims who want nothing to do with Hamas's atrocities and atheists and non-believers and the woke crowd who may have legitimate sympathies with pa- the Palestinian people but may become the, the, the Palestinian people's next targets. You mean queers for Palestine? I mean, queers for Palestine, anyone? You know. And yet, We received more pleasant news this 2023, or uh, in 2023, if I should say at this point. Officially, COVID-19 as a pandemic is over. 
and everyone should celebrate it by refusing to wear masks any longer outside medical situations, such as if you're sick yourself. In the realm of space, SpaceX is still committed to developing its Starship rocket despite setbacks in its iteration and several smear campaigns the media has been doing. While spaceflight has become very routine at this point in the 21st century, it goes to show that how our show rather how our modern age can achieve feats such as reusable rockets, automated spacecraft, and a renewed interest in everything space related. Another gladder news was the Asbury revival, an incident in the US where people at a Christian university experienced what they called the outpouring of graces from the divine. While the, the effects of which only lasted for merely weeks, its legacy is perhaps seen when June came along, when the Western culture wars reared its ugly head. The, the number of people just wanting to live normal lives without thinking about critical theory and join its movement is rising, and their voices are being heard louder. It also meant that common sense conversations are starting to return to discussions as a tool to allow people to understand each other despite and perhaps because of differences in opinion. This to me also meant something about finding God in the mundane and everything about everyday life. In the process of going to places on a bicycle, I, find, I found myself seeking God in places I have not yet visited before or have very, a very rare opportunity to do so. And I wanted to make the most out of it because on a personal note, there is a fork on the road and a junction in one of the lanes. In 2023, I suddenly saw myself staring at the roads ahead and what it would lead to. And at this time, I choose to go by the road that has a junction in it. And there are two reasons why. First, it seemed to me that this channel would still tackle the usual things I have shared in the past, such as commentaries for things that catch my attention and content regarding neurodiversity as I strive to understand my brain, which I have sus suspected to be autistic and adhd -er all along, or uh, for all of the neurodivergent folks out there, ADHD, you know, AU for autism, autism and then AD, uh, and combined with ADHD, so that's ADHD. But at the same time, I have also considered incorporating my cycling hobby in it as an interesting combination. In Tagalog, I have been working for the longest time being a cyclistang commentarista, a cycling commentator, while at the same time, advocate for a safer way of transportation via bicycle by calling out both car-centric people and bad actors in the cycling community, which we call gempoys. To be specific, what I wanted to do on social media was uh, to combine my Catholic faith, my interest in history and pop culture, and my way of cycling our roads and trails, which honestly is more on the side of, let's just say, uh, historical and pilgrimage-like other th uh, uh, than uh, just going there just because uh, you have uh, fix or don't happen. Uh, you go to the boundary arches or the, you know, uh, boundary arches or uh, big letter signs or the places and just just uh, ask yourself, what am I doing here? And uh, to be frank, the fact that I have, uh, that actually I have, uh, I made my long rides, pilgrimages to old towns. That's that's how I see it and that's how I would love to uh continue uh uh providing for my social media branding. So that's that. Now, we go to the second reason why I chose that road that has a junction in it. While I enjoy being alone for as long as I live, I intend not to stay alone until I die. 
In 2024, I intend to do something about meeting into that junction of the road I chose. This also meant that the production of videos and podcasts would be reduced to, a, to the bare minimum in order to focus on my current job and to make sure I get to that junction at the right time. For this, I, or rather we, wish for your prayers and support, if you know what I mean. In conclusion, 2023 taught me not only to prioritize the things that that would keep me from being a nuisance, but also help me find, find God in the mundane as I navigate the next 31 and hopefully more years of my life. Now that we are at the other side of the tunnel of the hourglass, may we find ourselves ready to make that decision to follow the road that has a juncture in it in 2024. And I guess that's where I would end that year-ender message because the other one, uh, the last few lines is uh, only applicable for December 31. So that's that. Now that we are in 2024, it's no long. I no longer have to uh, say that thing. <laughs> anyway, uh, before I go, I would just like to announce that. Uh, I would just like to announce that. Uh, the parish where Intepid HQ is located is going to enthrone the holy face of Manopello, uh, basically uh, a replica or a copy of the holy face of Manopello uh, in uh, the parish where Intepid HQ is located. And that is uh, our Mother of Perpet- Perpetual Help Parish uh, in Springville Heights, Bacor, Cavite. I don't want to dox exactly where I am in this uh in this parish of ours. That's uh that's still uh that's still a state secret, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But I live in the vicinity of that parish and uh I am as, as someone who has been involved in that parish, I am obligated to actually uh advertise <laughs> I don't want to say advertise, but promote the uh the en- the enthronement uh, ceremonies uh, within the mass on uh January 13, 2024. So perhaps I would uh I would be releasing this uh Friday. So that's going to be tomorrow if uh uh if I edit this uh right now after uh after the podcast after recording this so that I can uh release it on YouTube and Spotify. So it's going to be on January 13, 2024, at 7 a.m. there will be a karakol or a ritual dance uh, from from uh, uh, one point in uh, in the parish uh, area up until uh, it reaches uh, the church itself, and there will be mass at 10 o'clock, and uh, it would be offered by no other than Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagle. Yes, he is. Uh. Uh. Having a vacation, uh, he, uh, he's having a vacation here in the Philippines for an, uh, uh, again. So, uh, basically, uh, he is flying with that, uh, replica of Manopello, uh, the holy face of Manopello, back to Manila, back to, uh, this place, and he is going to enthrone, uh, that, uh, image in the parish where Intrepid HQ is located. So, I do hope you would uh come and uh join us in the in the celebrations so that's that okay i think uh that's uh that's promotion enough <laughs> i hope um i hope a lot of people would come uh, not just the not just the locals here but also my uh friends and contacts from the south to be um to be specific so that uh you guys can also uh discover this place <laughs> and perhaps uh if uh if finances permit i can um i can provide something to uh something to eat after the mass maybe maybe not i no promises here okay no promises so uh yeah that's that's the only thing that i wanted to talk about uh 
as I end this uh, episode of the Intrepid Podcast for 2024. And it's coming up to an hour. <laughs> I am draining right now because I have been talking a lot in English. I can't wait to uh, speak Tagalog after this. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, with all that said, this is Intrepid Ian Renyon reminding you to at all times be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Until then, look alive, stay alive, be kind to yourself and to each other. And as always, I hope you would follow our um my social media handles. It's gonna be it's gonna be uh presented on the Facebook or, or the or in the YouTube description rather and in the Spotify show notes so you can check that out. Also, if you're on YouTube, do subscribe to my channel, Intrepid Ian Renyon. Ring the notification bell by selecting all. And uh, as always, thank you for tuning in. From here in Intrepid HQ, see you next time for another talk here on the Intrepid Podcast. Ian out.